This video is about how American fowl bread spreads, or at least the main methods. It's probably one of the more important methods because if you're very familiar with how the disease spread, you can um, do things to stop it spreading. American fowl brood can spread between colonies in a number of ways. Um, one way is the bees themselves, either by bees drifting from one colony that's got American fowl brood and getting lost and going into another colony and taking the disease with them. And the second way is what we call robbing. It's when a colony dies of American fowl brood, other bees will go in and try and steal the honey. And what they do is they bring the disease back. Generally speaking, neither of those things are major causes of spread, although beekeepers quite often like to blame them for, for AFB problems. Um, it's because it's so hard to infect a colony, drifting bees, although they can do it, generally speaking, they won't. Robbing can be a localised problem, um, and there's lots of examples where they have spread the disease because a colony's died of American fowl brood or an American fowl brood colony's been knocked over and has been robbed out. The most common way of spreading American fowl brood disease is through what beekeepers do. And this is really taking things out of one beehive and putting them into another beehive. And we do it for a whole lot of reasons. Sometimes we want to balance a hive, so we take a frame of brood out of one hive and put it into the next one. Um, we might want to, we've got some equipment of a dead hive that we want to transfer across. We might want to feed them honey or pollen. Um, or we take the honey supers off, extract them, and put the wet supers that are still sticky with honey back onto a different hive. All of those things can spread American fowl brood, and it's res responsible for about, probably about 90 or 95% of the spread between colonies. Now, some of these beekeeping activities are a much greater risk of disease spread than others. And the biggest one by far is taking a frame of brood out of one hive and putting it into the next. If the colony you take it out has got American fowl brood, you almost certainly will spread the disease. The second um, probably most infective material is pollen. Um, we collect pollen, of course, using pollen traps. But not only do they collect pollen, if a colony's got American fowl brood, the bees are removing disease larvae and dropping them. So all the disease larvae fall into the pollen trap as well, get mixed up with the pollen, and then if you feed it to other colonies, you'll almost certainly spread the disease as well. Less likely is honey, for a couple of reasons. If a colony's got a bad American fowl brood infection, they're probably not collecting surplus honey in any case. The second issue, particularly around extracted honey, is that when you extract the honey at least, you're removing most of the effective material. You are leaving a film of it around, but generally speaking, there's not enough um, bacteria left there to create an infection. So extracted honey supers by themselves are not a major issue, but in a commercial beekeeping enterprise, they are, they are a big thing because you do it so often. You take honey supers off every hive, you extract them, and then put them back on every hive. So although individually they're not hugely a cause of spread of disease, because you do it so many times, that practice in a lot of outfits is their main cause of spreading American fowl brood around. So they have a few American fowl brood colonies, that they've missed, they've taken honey off them, they've extracted them, they've stored them, they might have even found the colonies with American fowl brood before the next honey season, destroyed them, but then they take the supers out of the shed again, spread them around and create some new ones. The next most common way of spreading American fowl brood is from old equipment. Equipment that the colony has died, it might have died because of American fowl brood or it might have American fowl brood and died, and they haven't determined why it's died, but then they've taken a whole box full of old frames and put them back on a clean colony, or a floorboard with bits of AFB material on it and put it onto a clean colony. And doing that is a good way of spreading the disease as well. It's much better, to, if you've got a dead colony, to put a strap around it, and at some stage put some bees in it, 
Let them breed up, up in there and then you'll know whether it's American fowl bred or not. Now, there's a million other beekeeping practices around. Using your hive tool, using your smoker, using your gloves, the deke on your truck. But all of these things are much, much less important. Um, yeah, sure, if you're using your hive tool to do a ropiness test instead of, a, instead of using a matchstick, it might be infective. But generally speaking, it's hard to infect colonies that way. So as long as you take a few simple precautions, all the other things are less important. So really, it's swapping frames of brood between hives, feeding pollen or honey, and the wet supers that you put back on hives after you've extracted. Those are the majority of causes of American fowl breed. If you can control those, then disease levels will decline. In this video, we covered how American fowl breed is spread between colonies and that how a beekeeper's activities can affect that. What I want to do now is to go through a list of the things that beekeepers can do, the most important things, to reduce the spread of the disease. Well, first of all, the really obvious thing, we're gonna talk about it later, is making sure that you can recognize American fowl brood. The next one is very, very important, and that is to do full brood frame inspections. That is, when you inspect a colony, you need to check every frame of brood. Don't be tempted to just check one or two frames. If you've got a dead out hive, one that's died for some other reason, um, it's a really good idea just to strap it together and repopulate it with just a single colony or a single swarm, rather than taking it all apart and splitting it between lots of hives, which means you can spread the disease to lots of hives. It's a really good rule not to feed pollen or honey to beehives because they, that's a really great way of actually spreading the disease. And lastly, when you do find it, it's important to destroy everything. Um, don't be tempted to take honey off. Um, legally, you can't at any rate, but you must destroy the hive, the honey, and any other woodware or boxes or lids or feeders that have been used with the hive.